Yves Giroux is Canada's parliamentary budget officer. He is with us now. Eve, always good to have you with us. Appreciate it. And uh, okay. let, let's just start with the the, the notion of uh, how much money has been spent and how well spent it is. We did get a fiscal update, and in terms of money out the door so far, it was a good breakdown of what we what we've seen. I think uh, is it enough transparency in your view for us to start to say how we're doing, whether it's working or not working, or how good a job it is? Well, the fall economic statement was a welcome change from a transparency perspective in the sense that it was the first time since uh, the budget or the update of 2019 that we had seen a long-term fiscal track from the government, which was beyond the current fiscal year. So in the fall economic statement, the government provided uh, an outlook uh, for the next five years for its fiscal position as well as where it sees, it sees the economy going. And that was a very welcome change. The government also provided three scenarios with respect to uh, what the pandemic could, how it could affect the economy and public finances. So from that perspective, it was a welcome change. But we still don't have a, a clear ongoing picture of the amount of COVID-related spending so far, which the House of Finance and the House of Commons Finance Committee, sorry, used to get on a biweekly basis. And we mm -hmm. thought that this would be reinstated because the House Finance Committee stopped receiving these updates when the House was prorogued in, in August. So, but that hasn't resumed. So what we don't, still don't have is a clear idea of how much the government has spent as of this date on COVID-19 related measures. We, there's been new concerns raised, um, and I, I guess I want to start by asking whether you think it's overblown, uh, but about the level of uh, transparency or granularity on just which businesses especially are receiving uh, government aid. Uh, do you think there is a critique to be made here that there, it should be clearer, or do you think this is the kind of thing that comes out in the wash through CRA or other departments? Well, that's a good question that and parliamentarians, I think, are right to ask these questions. For example, when we see that corporations are receiving dozens of millions of dollars in subsidies and they are paying their shareholders an equivalent amount in dividend, I think it's fair questions for parliamentarians to be asking the government. And there's probably scope for adjusting these uh, these programs if the government or and if parliamentarians rather believe it's appropriate. But that's the type of information that is useful for parliamentarians to have in order for them to decide whether legislative fixes are necessary. So whether it's um, at the company level or at a more granular level than what we currently have, that's a fairly good question. Mind you, there are other, also other questions of uh, privacy and, and mm -hmm. commercial interests that have to be protected to a certain extent. So these are not like, simple questions to answer. And I, I suppose one could argue, Eve, that even on the uh, the dividend, which on, on the one hand you could say, well, that's that feels wrong uh, that tax dollars are essentially being transferred to to shareholders. On the other hand, those are human beings who live, many of them, on fixed income, and the dividend payment is important to them. Uh, so businesses who pay dividends, maintaining them, is a kind of a core uh, a core element of what they do. Do you think Parliament is thinking through these things, or has it been? Is there any evidence, I guess, that that level of thought has gone into this, uh, or will it happen later uh, that we'll look back and say we did this right and that right, or this wrong and that wrong? I think during a pandemic, uh, when everybody is focused on saving lives and helping Canadians and businesses survive until we get to the other end of this pandemic, it's normal that things may get. Uh, forgotten or overlooked. Um, but after the pandemic, it'll be time, it, there'll be time to ask these questions and course correct if necessary. So this money has not disappeared into the ether. So if parliamentarians decide that it was inappropriate to behave that way, they can always enact legislation and, and correct what has happened. So it's really for parliamentarians to decide how and whether they want to address these issues. There is also this uh, up to 100 billion, up to three and a half percent of GDP Eve, uh, that the government has said they will use to target uh, stimulus. They don't seem to really to have an idea yet on this program. The finance minister saying, you know, if your viewers have ideas, they should write in uh, maybe a cute gimmick. But uh, it suggests that maybe there isn't any kind of clear idea yet. 
should there be? Uh, and and it, it, under that general heading, what do you think of the number 100 billion in the context of the deficits we already have? Well, the number seems big. And when we looked at the guardrails that the minister has indicated would be guiding when to uh, claw back that spending or to stop the stimulus spending, we looked at the employment rate, the number of hours worked, and the level of employment. And two out of these three guardrails, the level of employment and the number of hours worked, could be returning to their pre-pandemic level uh, in the first half of 2022 without any stimulus. So that's our forecast and that's others' forecast as well. So that would suggest that in the first year of the stimulus package, it could be enough to return to pre-pandemic level. So it would be easy to characterize that stimulus as maybe overblown or um, a bit too 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 late for the job that it's supposed to do. But if the government plans on doing that kind of stimulus for other reasons than purely stimulating the economy, that's fine. It may want to change some structural uh, aspects of the Canadian economy. But purely from a, an economic stimulus, um, data so far suggests that the first year of stimulus might be necessary, but beyond the first year, it may not be necessary if the aim is to return to pre-pandemic hmm. employment outcomes. Do what, and I guess I should ask you what you think about those guardrails. They are new um, in the sense that they're uh, a softer target, um, maybe in some ways easier to achieve, but maybe less meaningful from an economic benefit point of view. What do you think of employment as a measure of whether stimulus worked? Well, it's not a bad outcome because that's very often how people determine um, whether we're in a situation that's in a economically favorable or not. It's whether they have a job or a good job. But the um, the guardrails that the minister has included in the fall economic statement, uh, some of them are contradicting each other. So I talked about the employment levels and the number of hours worked, but there's also the employment rate. And the, the employment rate is the proportion of adults or people aged 15 and over who have a job. But because of the aging of the Canadian population, we already know this is on a long downward trend over time. So even with economic stimulus, we may never return to pre-pandemic employment rate uh, because of people getting older. And of course, as people, as the population gets older, there are, there's bound to be fewer people in the labor force. So that by a, this sole measure, we could be in a stimulus situation for a very long time without ever returning to pre-pandemic employment rates. Mm. So these measurements or these guardrails are contradicting each other. So it's, it's a bit surprising to see that as the criteria uh, to determine whether or not the government should continue its economic stimulus or when to stop it. And not a ton of time here, Eve, but we do have in the fiscal update um, a plan to track to lower deficits. But we should note that the plan, even at five years, and I think it's important to keep reminding people, more than 30 billion is a pretty large deficit in this country. I don't think anybody would consider that um, immaterial. Are you confident, though, even in that goal of getting down to 30 plus billion in five years? Well, looking at the fiscal track and the historical uh performance of that government, it has a track record of setting itself targets three or four or five years down the road, but constantly pushing back on them. So um, viewers may remember the small deficits of about $10 billion that the government promised in 2015. This target has constantly been pushed back. So there's a risk, given the precedent that this government has set, that we may not ever see the 24, $25 billion deficit of previous years. And that speaks also to the absence of a fiscal anchor in the fall economic statement, which is something I was looking forward to seeing, but I haven't seen. Yves Giroux, always good to have you with us. Appreciate your time today. Uh, Yves Giroux is Canada's parliamentary budget officer. Just